Taylor series expansion is such an interesting part of calculus. It's amazing seeing functions like sine x and e to the x power actually be written as polynomials and for it to actually work. That's what's amazing. And this is an extension of power series. I have a video going over how to visualize power series in Mathematica. But I want to look at Taylor polynomials and Taylor series in particular. Now what's tricky about this is that if you remember from a Taylor series, the coefficients are defined by the nth derivative with the center plugged in divided by n factorial. Actually making that a function in Mathematica is a little tricky. Um, thankfully though, Mathematica has a built-in function. So if, let's start off by looking at e to the x. All right, so Mathematica has a built-in function for that called series. And what you want to do is you want to type in your function. So we're going to do the series expansion of e to the x. And we're going to let x be our variable. We need a center. Our center is going to be 0, so we're doing a Maclaurin series. And then this is a Taylor polynomial or a Maclaurin polynomial, so we specify how far out we want to go. How about the first seven terms? There it is. There's my Taylor expansion centered at zero of e to the x. And notice we have like this o x to the eighth power. That's like some sort of uh, remainder here. So what we're going to do to get rid of that is just say normal around my series. And then that truncates it just to give me my seventh polynomial of the expansion e to the x power. I hope that makes sense. So if I want to do the same thing to sine, I just need to take the same path. I just take series of sine x, and I'm going to let x go from 0 to, uh, they said the first 12. Let's do the 12th one to see what it looks like. All right, and notice these are just odd powers, right? So the even powers don't show up, and we get alternating signs. So we have x minus x cubed over 6, which is 3 factorial, plus x to the fifth over 120, which is 5 factorial. So in general, we're getting x to the 2k plus 1 over 2k plus 1 factorial times negative 1 to some power. That would be the n plus 1 power. All right, so that's how we get our alternating series. Now, if we wanted the first 12 like they asked for, we could just do a table of these. And I'm going to let my polynomial go from 0 to, all right, centered at 0, I'm going to let it go the first k terms, and we're going to let k go from 1 to 12, and that will give us the first 12 polynomials. They don't look very good like that. Let's do table form around it. There they are, okay, and now notice they are duplicates, so we only got six unique polynomials there. All right, now what's interesting about this is when we start graphing them, and I think a lot of students never really get to see that. So we have sine x supposedly equals these polynomials, at least for a little while, or they estimate these polynomials estimate sine. What does that look like in a graph? So we can plot a, a series, but we have to be a little bit careful about it. If I just say, if I just take my normal function around a series, for example, if I'm saying, the normal uh, series sine x centered at zero. We're going out to the fourth degree, so we know that's actually going to be a cubic polynomial. Going from negative 2 pi to 2 pi, I get this weird estimate. It says that's saying negative 2 pi is not a valid variable, um, so it's some sort of internal issue. What, the way we can get around that is if I say evaluate around my series, now it'll plot the curve. That is a fourth Taylor polynomial for the sine expansion which would actually be this x minus x cubed over 6. It's a, the fourth degree term zeroes out. Okay, now we can do some cool stuff with this. One thing is if I carefully put uh, braces around all this, I can actually look at this with the sine curve itself and see how the two of them relate to each other. So now the blue is sine, and notice that the yellow, which is my Taylor polynomial, when I'm in this middle range, they look very, very close. Okay, and that's the whole point of the Taylor expansion, is as we get further into the series, we get more and more like sine. So the way we could visualize that is if I have to manipulate around all of this, and what I want to manipulate is how far out into the Taylor expansion I go. So let's let this be the value a, and then I'm going to let a go from, oh, I don't know, how about 1 to 12 and what happens is remember that we get duplicates so I can do integer steps of 2 and that way we don't have to 
visualize the same graph being tw plotted twice. Okay, so now look, this is the first Taylor polynomial, which is just x. And as I drag a across, that's my cubic. There's my fifth degree. And look, as I'm getting further into the series expansion, this yellow line is getting closer and closer to my blue curve, right? And that's the whole point. If I let a go out really far, let's say 25, and I do the same game as I keep going through these curves, I mean, after a while, you can't even tell the difference between sine and my Taylor expansion, right? And that's great. And we should mention that the Taylor expansion of sine has a radius of convergence, negative infinity to positive infinity, which is why we could do this. We could expand our interval from negative 2 pi to negative 10 pi to 10 pi and still get the same thing. All right, another thing, a cool thing we could do is we could actually plot all of these together so you could visualize all of them. We have to be a little bit careful because it's a lot of nestled functions. It's easy to uh, get a misplaced brace or something. So what we want to do is we want to take the series of sine x 0 to n this time. And we're going to normal that. Okay, now around that we're going to actually make a table. And I want my table to go, I want n to go out to how about the first 20 or so. Okay, now when I want to plot this, remember to plot you need to evaluate. And actually when you evaluate a table it looks better anyway. You get colors instead of just everything being blue or yellow. So I'm going to plot this now from 0 to 2. Uh, let's go from negative 2 pi to 2 pi. I like that. And I also, don't forget I want sine in there as well. So I'm going to carefully put a brace, sine x, and close my brace after all that evaluate table and all that stuff. So now when I plot this, look at that. My sine curve is buried in there somewhere and what we're seeing is all the other Taylor polynomials on top of each other. I could do a manipulate on this so I could just visualize, watch them as they grow. And how I could do that, change this 20 to something that we variate. Let's let k start at one and end at 20 and we're gonna do integer steps of two. So now there's my first one again and as I drag, we can see not only the first one, but the other one's being added on. And you can see it's just wrapping around my sine curve, which is really cool. After a while, you can't even tell the difference. Once again, Mathematica shows that it's a great tool to visualize these interesting concepts that sometimes static pictures don't get us, allow us to see. I think it's very fascinating to see these Taylor polynomials literally wrap around the sine curve as we go further out. And it shows how these Taylor polynomials do estimate these functions, and the further we go out, the better our estimate is. Mathematica can help us visualize that very quickly. If you have any questions on this, I'd be glad to help. I hope it makes sense. Thank you for watching.